I think it's interesting to be in London, which like New York, and why I know these are two beautiful cities to do a co-production in, a city that has so much modernity and at the same time history. And I think that's what makes Christmas Carol still a story worth telling and re-investigating. Um, our mission has been to blow the dust off the cover of Christmas Carol, forget what we know about it, strip it out, and start back with the words. In the beginning there was the word, and the world was made. And that's what we're doing with Christmas Carol. We're going back to the text and we're letting Charles Dickens tell his story through us, which is why I'm here in London. I'm here in London because there's no way I'll take on this great writer's story without knowing him. And the only way to know him is to spend time where he grew up, to spend really deep time in his hometown and the debtor's prison and the streets he ran in and the pubs he drank in and the theaters that he visited. I mean, that's what I'm doing here in London. I am following the story. And I know that our production is special and I know it has a place in this world. And when I came here, you know, it was a lot easier to tell people I had a bunch of fancy meetings, which I do. Um, but more importantly, I just knew that this was the next step in us telling the story. I've heard you've read almost everything, haven't you? Yeah, I've read most things. I've read a bit of Great Expectations. I'm still finishing it. I've read Oliver Twist. I've read A Christmas Carol. I've read. Um, What do you what do you love about his books? They're so real, so when you read them you're straight away there and like watching you. Yeah. I pretty much fell in love with Dickens straight away. Um, mm -hmm. I started reading Dickens in my own time rather than being told to read him mm -hmm. from school. Um, and at your own pace, at your own leisure, I began to sort of fall in love with the way he uses words, uh, the characters, the way he sets the scene. Um, my favourite mm. thing I think about Dickens, apart from his very interesting and complex personal life um, and the time he lived, of course, was um, is his descriptive nature. Mm. You know how he opens books, hard times. You know the beginning; it just puts you right there in mm. your in Coke Town, and it's just amazing. So over the years, I read more and more, and I think I was still perhaps not really 100% sure that I was. Um, Sort of a, a big Dickens fan still. I was still sort of like reading him here and there. And then I think after taking a break and revisiting some of his work, mm -hmm. that was when it really struck me how much I love Dickens. Mm -hmm. And being at a different place and time in my life made me all the more appreciate it and see mm -hmm. it from a different angle. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, now I'm completely obsessed with Dickens. <laughs> I've worked at the Charles Dickens Museum for about 11 and a half, it's either 11 and a half or 12 and a half years, I'm now losing wow. count. Um, <laughs> so a very long time and um, it's not just a job at all, it's, I can't leave, it's really mm. strange. Mm. But I think he's definitely got a hold of me. And, mm. um, it's just uh, something that uh, uh, I've got hooked on, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, uh, sometimes I say oh, he's not a very good person, you know, mm. because the way he treated his wife. Mm. And, Whatever. Then on the other hand, he's done other things. You know, he mm -hmm. um, uh, got a, um, friendly with uh, a lady, mm -hmm. uh, Bernadette uh, Coots. Coots. Yes, yeah. And they, you know, sort of opened a home for the eleven-year-old. Mm -hmm. And he's getting no support from, you know. He, mm -hmm. he was also very. You must have read, you know. He was not um, jealous or anything, but his sister Fanny, mm -hmm. who you know, just got money on her. Yeah. And send her to, and he was bright, you know, his t uh, tutors from mm -hmm. uh, Chatham or Portsmouth, wherever they were, you know, when mm -hmm. he went to school, they all had, a, you know, knew that he was something. And then the parents didn't realize that there was this potential. Mm -hmm. And I think his, 
It's just, uh, mm. I, I felt, you know, reading, I felt sorry for Me too. It's so deep for me because I started when I was so young. You know, and that, and that was sitting on a boiler in the kitchen, middle of the night, a picture by the version of the camera when I was about six or seven. And just sitting there, everyone's in bed, absolutely silent. And I just remember looking at these pictures of Marley's ghost and reading the story. And it was almost, I don't know what it is actually, because sometimes like, it's almost like you are, you know this thing. Mm. It's almost like you know this thing and you're just mm. re acquainting yourself with something. And I think that's that's an odd thing, isn't it? But it's not exactly deja vu, but it's just like, um, mm. this is something I know deep down and I'm um, just reconnecting with this. Well, um, the way I came to Dickens was at the age of 11. Uh, when I used to steal my sister's books. I was rather fascinated by them as a child, and particularly as I was told not to touch my sister's books. And so, forth. <laughs> so, of course, I did uh, take one, which was Oliver Twist, which was the first Dickens I ever read. And, wow. um, and I was absolutely gripped and fascinated and horrified too, but I didn't find it funny at all. I mean, I found it terrifying. Mm. Um, Fagin and Sykes, of course, uh, identifying myself with Oliver very strongly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things that impressed me most were the illustrations. Um, mm. I can't remember who they were by now. They were not the original illustrations, mm. and they were kind of sepia, uh, glossy, full plate illustrations. Um, by not a very famous artist, I think, but they fascinated me and I used to pore over them. What do you think about Charles Dickens, now that you've been in his house? He's nice. Yeah. And he thinks about the Yeah. That's my favorite thing about him. And he's a very nice person because in the servants' rooms, he wrote, like, Captions from his books saying mm. how the rich people need to help the poor and not just keep all their money for themselves. Yeah. <coughs> That's my favourite thing about him. I think the theme that I that always comes back is the just the theme of common humanity and that mm. idea that Dickens wrote about people from the poorest echelons of society mm -hmm. to the richest and yeah. he had friends from the poorest to the richest uh, sort of yeah. Um, backgrounds and I think that really comes through just especially with Christmas Carol that idea mm -hmm. of sort of just being a bit more grateful for life and mm -hmm. not taking things for granted and just being a bit more loving and having your heart open is mm -hmm. something that is day to day very easily forgotten so it's just so nice to be reminded and that's why I think people connect so well oh, yeah. to Christmas Carol in particular because it's just the, the story relate to it. It's yeah. Not, you've had a difficult life. Too. Absolutely. You, know, you relate to it. Yeah. And that's how, what happened to me. I said, oh my God. Yeah. You know, um, um, sixpences or whatever in different packets for different days. You know, that's mm -hmm. why he was very careful with his money. You know, when mm -hmm. he was uh, mm -hmm. even making quite a lot. Mm -hmm. He was careful because he'd seen those bad days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what else I can say. No, that's yeah. beautiful. But uh, yeah. I, I just... Uh, uh, I, I think I uh, read his books, but when I read his biographies, I think I understood him more yeah. reading. Me too. Yeah. What do you think about all the books he wrote? It's they're very, they're, they always have a model behind them, like a Christmas carol, mm -hmm. to be nice to everybody and people will be nice back to you. And yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious what you feel mm -hmm. like when you read his work what is it that you love about it um, what uh, his uh, hard life you know mm -hmm. the way he uh, was brought up and uh, you know his uh, ambition to study and he wasn't able to mm -hmm. and uh, you know through his family his parents you know how he was treated mm -hmm. you know by his mother and sent to the factory and everything then his uh, uh, his uh, walking about London and trying to find out the downtrodden you know the children yeah. and uh, that's I mean that's the inspiration for doing the London uh, by the London walks I did I mean it's purely the Carol and my experience as a Carol because 
you know, th these are the reasons I found these dark streets, because I was trying to re, um, re-enter. I mean, I mean it, it's almost like, well, in life you have experiences, don't you, that are very special, precious ones. And you do, you have a choice in life. You either keep moving on to, I need another one, or I need another different one, or I need another one over here. Or sometimes you might just try and re-enter that one that you had. And mm -hmm. It's very difficult not to want to re-enter the carol. I got to come into Westminster Abbey by myself, escorted in like a beautiful lady and lay flowers at Charles Dickens' grave. And that is going to be the most meaningful thing and I could barely take it in, but I did. I only wish I had breathed a bit more and taken my time, but I did it. And I don't know what else, but I know this is a blessed production and I have so hope that I'll do a good job. Whatever I have tried to do, I've done it with all my heart. Charles Dickens.